to deliver a message that runs counter culture, counter distinctive, counter intuitive to the zeitgeist, to the spirit of the times, to the uh, social notion of today that this whole age of Aquarius, this feminine energy permeates everything. So it's attacking patriarchy. Now, I don't expect those that make merchandise over us to give us any tool, any strategy, stratagem or a gem at all to try to assist us in changing the power structure. Shalom, family. I pray that this day finds you well and in the faith of our Father. I want to talk to you today about fear. I had a conversation with a dear loved one who was concerned about the path that I'm on, who was concerned about my advocacy more specifically for patriarchy, for men being the head of their households and taking control of, you know, the direction of the house. They were concerned about that. They were concerned because they looked online, they Googled it, and they found item after item, report after report, article after article, book after book that attacked, demeaned patriarchy as an archaic way for a man to think and move. And as, you know, she was sharing these things with me from a very, very sincere place, I realized that I could not display any fear. Faith and fear cannot coexist. That I understood that the father chose me for such a time as this to be able to deliver a message that's a little more palatable to deliver a message that runs counter culture counter distinctive counter intuitive to the zeitgeist to the spirit of the times to the uh, social notion of today that this whole age of Aquarius, this feminine energy permeates everything. So it's attacking patriarchy. Now, I don't expect those that make merchandise over us to give us any tool, any strategy stratagem or a gem at all to try to assist us in changing the power structure. Now, the people that are attacking this family structure, and that's all that it is, they attack it from behind the veil of the very thing that they are attacking, but they're using their proxies. They're using uh, uh, straw man arguments. They're using red herrings. They're using extremes. I mean, the pendulum will swing all the way to the left. As to why the structure that the God of the Hebrews authorized. So then you have to ask yourself, maybe you don't consider asking yourself. Why is this society so against it? Why are they coming out and fighting it so hard? Yet you can see that they align under that very family structure. That those that 
are in control. These families, they're ruled by men. They have sons, they have wives, they have, they don't even call them concubines. They have little side action. They have these things. They go back and they venerate their founding fathers and they tell you to do the same thing. And they interpret the modern contemporary events by what their founding fathers originally intended. This is patriarchy. So the way that they dealt with their women is not the way that our ancestors, the Hebrews, the Israelites, that's not the way that we dealt with our women. So I understand that women, they, many of them have a problem with it. And, you know, considering the, the historical backdrop, I can't be mad at them. I can't be mad. But what I have to do, my call, you know, I've shared that in Malachi for that. It's time and, and I'm trying to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the heart of the children back to the fathers. You know, that children is son. That process cannot occur without having good ground, a good environment in which that seed, that son, that child came from. And that is a good woman, a good wife. Without that, that cannot take place. So the presumption is that the wife is there, that you have the mindset of Mama Sarah. You have the mindset of Rebecca, of Leah, of Rachel, Bilhah, Zilpah, all these mighty women, Ruth, I, Esther, I could just go down a list of the great minds, you know, Deborah, the great women that had a significant role to play in Zion. So we don't step on, reduce, dumb down our women, not those that practice the brand of patriarchy. That I'm talking about. And I don't want to just keep mentioning the name. Because it's just really biblical family structure. And I tried to help the sister see. That it was a righteous thing for me to try to convey it. In a way that maybe people hadn't heard before. A little more palatable. Because the books are out there attacking it. Because they do not want you to consider. And it's important. It's imperative. Is actually is mandatory for a wife to sign on to this. See, you can't make anyone. You can't make a woman see it. You can't make them see the value. The veracity. The, 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 the fact that it is imperative for us to be able to have dominion they fight it because they know that it is a tool of liberation that it's not about oppressing women and I'm not going to be before you long but I have to clearly articulate this because I know that when I had this conversation that it was evocative it was emotional because they cared about what I was trying to do. And all I'm really trying to do is turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons and the hearts of the sons back to their fathers. But to do that, you need a good wife to do that. You need a good environment to need to do that. You have to have prime soil. In which you've planted your seed in. Back to what I was saying. Patriarchy is not. About. Men coming together. To destroy. To reduce. The value of a woman. We don't do that. There's far more important things in the world. That we have to contend with. Instead of trying to contend with our wives. 
The power of this family structure that was given to us by our power, by our tribal deity, by the most high, the God of the Hebrews, is that it's about men coming together with their families, with their resources, with their knowledge, with their understanding, with their professions. And then the, these men begin to work together. See, that's, that's, the, that's the difficult part, to get men to work together. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get men to come together to work, to be able to compete with the dominant culture in controlling the mind and the resources that our people possess. So that instead of giving our money back to those that have rule over us, and they do, you can, you don't have to like it, but they do. That's part of the, the deculturing. Instead of going and giving our money back to them, why don't I come together with other men that have businesses and skill sets and tools and they think like I think and we can come together and, and unite and form like this configured being so that if I need carpentry, I can go to my brother. If I need an electrician, I can go to my brother. If I need stone masonry, I can go to my brother. If I need to learn Hebrew, I can go to this brother. If I need vegetables, I can go. And if, if I need meat, if I need a butcher, if I need a plumber, if I need a welder, if I need all of these things within our community. That's at least one or two more times that that money can stay amongst us. But as long as we stay separated by doctrine, we'll never have any dominion. We'll be a joke. The laughing stock. This whole Israelite awakening will become a joke just like, um, and they'll make fun of us just like they do, you know, the black church on television, people jumping and shouting and falling over stuff and swinging swords and, uh, uh, singing loud and boastful. But then you go right back to your home and you live like they've told you to live. You haven't formed any strong Ties and relationships with other men within your group, and then your group starts to practice. And I can, I, I got, I, I, I got to stop. I can only say so much. I'm only authorized to give so much, but the purpose of it is for us to begin to have dominion. And I know that there's going to be naysayers that say, you can't have dominion in the land of your enemy. You misunderstand what we mean by dominion. See, it's, almost, it's, it's like the feast days, family. We know that the feast days are a shadow and a type of things that are to come. We read Zephaniah, I mean, Zechariah. You know that we're going to practice the feast of Sukkot. In the kingdom, yet we do it now as a shadow on the type. We do it now, right? You have the opportunity to start practicing dominion within your family, within your group. Start practicing. If not now, when? When can the Father use you to do justice and judgment? You have a chance to do that within your family. You don't have to wait. You have a chance to practice your leadership skills, to develop it, to refine it, to be long-suffering, to be kind, to allow them to purge out of you Impatience, impurity, impurities, the colonized mindset where you want to react, 
maybe even in a feminine manner, but you withhold because you know, ah, that's, that's not how the father deals with us. He corrects us in measure. Are you correcting your family in measure? Are you correcting your children in measure? Are you just flying off the handle just the way that, you know, maybe you've seen it done. You just about to go off on everybody. You lose control and you're going to discipline your child for losing control. Let me say this. You see this lion back here? That's a picture that my wife got for me. You know, that lion is rather genteel, calm, unassuming, non-threatening. He can be that way in the environment of his family. He can be that way with his, they don't have wives, obviously, in the den, in the comfort of his home. If you look at the way he deal with the lionesses, look at the way that he deals with his cubs. It's almost just lazy. He lets them pull on him and bite on him and scratch on him and rah, they, they add him. He's not a threat to his family. He's only a threat to those that will come and encroach and try to take what is his. That's the only time. That the teeth come out. I've always had a love and a. <laughs> admiration. For lions. You know before I understood in, in Leviticus that we should not. You know make any marks in our bodies. You know I went and I got this this tattoo. It's it's a lion. It's upside down. Um, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, underneath it says that, you know, no packs, which was, uh, from, um, a quote that says there can be no packs, no agreements between lions and men. I believe that was that Homer said that I'm not sure, but there can be no packs between lions and men. I understood that I was a lion and that I would not make any agreements or come into any covenant with anyone that was not a lion. I understood that. But now being on this side, I understand greater that I have to form covenants, agreements with men of the same ilk where we can come together and unite and do something greater. That's why I got to advocate for patriarchy. I'm not afraid. I can't have fear. Fear has torment. It is not of Yah. Of course, it's going to be a difficult role. Of course, I'm going to be attacked. Of course, people won't understand. Of course, I, I, I had to set my face like a flint. I had to understand that if nobody else understands, I know what the father told me. I know that I see it time and time again in the text, in the law and in the prophets. In the Psalms, I see patriarchy over and over again, and it's going to be the same way. In the kingdom. That in my father's house. A many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. That's an example of a son bragging on his father. That's the way, y'all. That's the only way. So I had to put my family to rest and let them know that I do understand that it is a daunting task. I know that I've read a lot of the academic papers. I know that it is not a popular subject matter. I know. I know. But the father never said that it would be easy. 
But I said I would go. I'm going against cultural norms. And our people fight it even though it's in their best interest. They say that they serve this God, this power. Yet so many times because we've been decultured, denatured and dehumanized, we advocate for things that are not in our best interest and go against the very dictates and narratives of the God that we say that we serve. I have no fear. I know that Yah is with me and I know that he's with you. May the most I continue to bless you, strengthen you and enlarge your territory. Oh, patriarch. Hallelujah. We move in faith, not fear. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. We're going to move how the father said move and display his character and his nature in the earth, being his authorized representative. And I didn't authorize myself. I was authorized by a greater. Ah, man. Hallelujah. I could say so much more. But time is short and I'll pause right there and I'll come back. Um, as I told you, I got to come back with the video, um, dehumanized and denatured. Maybe I'll do those together because those are a couple of the, the strategies and the agendas that have been against our people. Love y'all family. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>